Hello, my name is Philo. I am the head coach for Boston Uprising's academy team, and I'm here to discuss one of the big errors that I think I see with VOD reviews. So first off, the question needs to be, what is a VOD review? And a VOD review fundamentally is a teaching opportunity where you go over video gameplay of a person's play, either from a third person perspective or a first person perspective, and you look to review the gameplay, find errors, think, find things that went well, find things that went poorly, but ultimately walk away from a VOD review with some information on what you need to be doing better. VOD reviews can are basically uh, a combination of three different things in, in, in their goals. Number one would be teaching. So when I'm doing a VOD review with an individual, I might be teaching a concept. So for example, uh, if I'm coaching a team and I'm seeing that my team is communicational structure from that third person POV, I can hear that there's a lot of clutter between communicate uh, between rounds. I might say, all right guys, listen, when we're between uh, fights rather, we need to make sure that we clear comms so we all track and that we find out what we want to be doing on the next fight as quickly as we possibly can. Get a game plan, right? And maybe they're unfamiliar with like the importance of that concept, so that would be a teaching concept. The second one would be correcting. Uh, and this is similar to teaching, but I think it's different enough to give it its own separate category. Uh, correcting would basically be where an individual or a team is making, doing something because they feel like it's the right play. They're consciously doing it, not unconsciously doing it. Um, maybe they're positioning themselves in a specific uh, location. Maybe they're playing a composition in a specific way that they think is correct, but it's incorrect. It's not the best way to do things, or maybe it's just flat out bad. I mean, that, which in this case, you're, you are teaching them, but it's not about teaching them new concepts, it's about correcting the mistakes of the bad habits that they had previously. And the third thing that a VOD review wants to accomplish, and this is generally on the follow-up, is, is accountability. In other words, after you've taught an individual or a team on what they need to be doing, uh, after you've worked with a team, um, okay, this is what we need to be doing, this is why, and let's fix this bad habit. Now you go into a scrimmage, you, maybe the next review, there's individuals and team that were working on specific aspects now the accountability is, okay, did you actually, did we improve on that? Did we make a conscious effort to work at that? Obviously, it's not going to be uh, black and white. It's not going to be, you know, night and day. It's not going to be a 180 immediate, oh, it's fixed, perfect. Now we're Overwatch League level. Um, but ultimately, you want to be saying, okay, let's track our progress. Are we keeping ourselves accountable? Are we really focusing and improving at what we need to be working on? Um, so sometimes it's not even teaching new concepts. It's about saying, you know what you're supposed to be doing. Are we doing it? And then if they have any questions on how to be doing it in these particular circumstances, you obviously address those questions. So that's how to do a VOD review or what a VOD review provides. But ultimately, the question needs to come, especially with this video. So so what are people doing wrong then? What is wrong with VOD reviewing? Now, I've been lucky to have been involved in teaching and coaching for well over a decade now, uh, even act, back as a young teenager. And I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time testing things, experimenting things, looking at the science behind it. And I, and I do believe the science is behind me when I say that attention span is an important aspect of VOD reviewing that's often not incorporated even at the highest level. Um, I think we've all seen or heard of somebody uh, in a lecture, maybe at the college uh, or at a high school, and they just go on and on and on. You lose the you lose attention span. And a lot of the time, it's not just with the length, but also with the delivery of the VOD review. And what my job here is not so much to give you the nitty gritty and how to do things better, but to give you big macro concepts, the overall arching concept that you need to keep in mind when you are coaching somebody or even when you're coaching yourself so that you can actually keep your attention span um, tighter in so that ultimately the VOD review will have more value. So the number one way to make sure that you're maintaining focus with your team or the individuals that you're doing VOD reviews with is discussion. So discussion can simply be put as making sure that the individuals that you're coaching are involved with the VOD review. But a lot of it can be as simple as, hey guys, we need to fix our compositional execution here. This is a brawl composition. We want to get on top of the spam composition as fast as possible here. So how are we going to do that in this map, right? What do you guys think? Now, I, I had suggested going through the right pathway, but what do you guys think, right? Now, a lot of that can mean like, well, I'm the boss here. I should be telling them what to do. And obviously, that's, <laughs> that's something that we all as coaches, we dream of. But ultimately, sometimes I learn things from the players. But more importantly than that, if you're getting the players involved in discussing with what the best move is, even if it's not exactly the best solution or the best decision, if you have the players come to that conclusion and you're not simply force feeding them whatever you want them to do, then those players will remember it better moving forward because for them to actually discuss, they have to be listening. And if they're listening, they're probably focused. So the goal should be to involve them in the discussion, not only so that you have everybody on the same page, not only so that uh, the players can feel like they have a voice with what they want to be doing, what they think is the correct way of playing, not only so that you have an opportunity to learn, right? 
but also the most important way is the uh, most important thing is that you're keeping them involved by involving them in the discussion if it's a one-way street they can just flick off the lights right they put the ping pong balls the black sharp to make like their eyes are open okay that's an outdated joke but you know they, they keep themselves involved in the discussion and you keep them involved mentally and focused. Uh, ultimately, how much discussion is involved in Vaudrides depends on the review. Sometimes I'll have a concept to go over uh, where I have something very specific I want to teach. And so it's more of a question and answers or like, what do you guys think? Like, this is what we're gonna be doing. Do you guys have any questions? What do you guys think about this aspect, right? And I'll allow them and I'll, and I'll kind of force that discussion on it. So sometimes uh, discussion is so important that you have to almost force it by being the one asking the questions. Hey guys, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about this? Or do you think this is the best way of doing things? And if you're struggling to spark discussion, don't be vague with your questions. Don't be like, hey, team, how are we doing today? No, ask the individual. Hey, uh, what's a good name? Uh, hey, Doggo, Doggo, what do you think about this position here? Or Kronda, is this the best composition to run here? Or Tap, where is the best pathing here? What would be best for you positionally wise here against this composition? Like directly, specifically involved in the discussion so that they feel more involved and they will be more focused they will learn better and you'll see those results better in scripts the second way of improving the focus of your VOD reviews is through preparation now this one doesn't seem quite as intuitive because it's like well then how would preparation assist me in maintaining my teams or individual focus and the point being is that your VOD reviews are just simply going to be better more informative and more to the point if you have them prepared for example if I want to go over a specific map uh, maybe I want to go over our Hollywood performance with this composition. I'll go through it once. I'll take some short notes. Oh, this team fight we need to look at. This is a problem. This is a problem. And then we get to the file review. It's not, all right, let's just watch Hollywood guys and see what mistakes stand out. That's a very nonchalant, lackadaisical way of sitting back and doing a lazy VOD review. Unfortunately, being a coach is hard work. And a lot of that hard work is not something that you can speed up or do super efficiently. Sometimes you just have to watch the team fights. And ultimately, when you come to a VOD review and you know what's going to happen before it's going to happen, you know what errors that uh, stood out the most from you upon rewatching. Uh, maybe some things stood out to you communicational structure-wise. You'll already have not necessarily your talking points, but your focus points or things that you want to put extra emphasis on before it even happens now if we delve even deeper into preparation for example i want to be teaching a concept for example i want to be adjusting our communicational structure if i spend five minutes thinking about oh, yeah, i think i'll do that better with our communicational structure and, you know we need to work on our old tracking that's not good preparation and that's not going to lead to a very constructive VOD review. If I spend half an hour or even 45 minutes to an hour thinking about, okay, what's the best way of doing communication structure? Okay, that wouldn't work because this player isn't as comfortable. Okay, my goal here isn't to tell you how to prepare a VOD review, but to tell you that you should be preparing most of your VOD reviews. Go into the reviews with some sort of goal, maybe a concept to teach or a specific team fight that you want to discuss. Maybe it's like, all right, I've looked through all of Ilios, but Ilios well. That's our real problem. Let's just watch all of Ilios Well. Ruins, uh, we only have so much time for one. Don't need Ruins. We don't need Lyles, but Well is the, like even that preparation, just knowing what you want to look at is so much more important, or so much more valuable rather than just simply going in and hoping that you find something just by watching hours and hours of gameplay. Not very efficient use of your time and you'll guarantee to lose focus with your individuals uh, or with the individual that you're coaching. Next concept that it's important to remember when you're doing a VOD review is to keep it purposeful. Now, a lot of us tend to struggle with this one a little bit. We like to be a little bit theoretical. We like to be a little bit philosophical. We like to be like, well, theoretically, if this this composition, and if you think about this, if we try this, well, what do you guys think if we theory craft this composition on this map? And what do you guys think is a bad? No, no, no. Like when you go into a VOD review, you want to be more narrow-minded and focused. And this has a lot to do with the point number two, which would be preparation. And it's don't go in with vague goals as a VOD review. You should never go, let's just look over last block and see what we did wrong. Um, let's, uh, let's uh, you know, we'll just see what errors we made you want to go in being with a very very direct purpose either you know our hollywood attack sucks in first one we need to find out how to do it better or i think our composition is bad how are we going to fix it or uh our, our communicational structure between fights is bad or we're playing this composition versus brawl wrong or we're playing brawl versus this composition wrong you want to have a very specific goal with what you're trying to accomplish with the vod review now sometimes there could be a little bit more leniency of this for example
For example, sometimes we'll have a really bad scrim block and man, that last map was just awful and we didn't know what to do. We couldn't figure it out. So sometimes it just happened, right? You didn't have time to prepare it. You don't really know what the purpose is. You just know that you need to look at that map and find out what was wrong. And in those circumstances, sometimes it's okay to do it with the team. But in the vast majority of your VOD reviews, whether they're with an individual or with a team, you have a very specific goal before you even get into the VOD review. Uh, and a lot of that, like I said, does come down for preparation. What are we looking to work at here? Uh, ultimately, the VOD review or a map can be 20, 25 minutes long. So spending a 20, 25 minutes of just watching gameplay, not even including pauses, discussion, whatever, that can be a lot of wasted time. And it can ultimately feel like the players are just saying, I'm just sitting here. We don't even know if this is going to be useful for me or not. The players should know that this before the VOD review even starts, what are we looking at? What do we need to be going on here? This is really important. I need to keep myself focused. So again, make sure that your VOD reviews are purposeful, have a direction or a concept or even a discussion that you want to be sparked about compositional stuff, map stuff, communicational structure, whatever, before you get into the review as much as you possibly can. The last important aspect of maintaining focus during VOD reviews is simple. It's simply motivation. It is perhaps the most important one, but also the most difficult one to maintain. Uh, and this one is going to be relatively short, but I think the important thing to keep in mind is that you want to motivate your players to be involved with VOD reviews. Be frank with them. Be like, listen, guys, I know VOD reviews can be a little boring. They can be a little slow, and I'm going to do my best to motivate you guys because, listen, this is important. We all want to be in Overwatch League. We want to be pros. We want to succeed. We want to feel the good feeling of winning it, but that's only going to come as a result of us doing uh, a good VOD review, of focusing during VOD reviews. So you guys tell me, like, what do you guys need from me to be able to motivate you to do VOD reviews? Because we need to be doing this. You guys got to focus. I got to focus, right? And you can even take that feedback as uh, to help your preparation, to help you be more purposeful. But ultimately, even just that reminder every so often reminds players, man, you're, he's right, man, this is really important, right? We got to be going in there. So ultimately, rather than making just the VOD review better, you can encourage the players to do better better during the VOD review by telling them, be frank with them, like I said, focus guys, this is really important. This is this is, this is is what you want to do. Uh, have that motivation line up with their goals. That's the best way of doing this. Don't try and say, you guys should be wanting to VOD review. You guys should be wanting to win. Be like, listen, you guys told me that you wanted to win. You guys told me you wanted to get to Overwatch. You guys told me that you wanted to win this tournament or, or, or be beating these diamond teams or whatever your team's goals are. I'd say how we're going to get there is through these VOD reviews. Motivate them uh, to do better themselves. Don't just make the, the pie look tastier. Encourage them to actually eat the pie to begin with. So how do we actually increase focus time? And this comes down to how we handle the frequency and the time of VOD reviews. And this is also an incredibly important aspect of VOD reviews. Number one is going to be through increasing the frequency, but reducing the time. All right. So more frequent VOD reviews means that there's more frequently able to update players with what needs to be worked on, keeping ourselves accountable. Number two, you'll be able to increase the volume. So just the, if you you know do a ton of VOD reviews, there's gonna be a lot more time involved in the VOD review as a whole. And number three, you'll be able to keep VOD reviews fresh. So update basically means that like, make sure that your goals are up to date. But fresh means that if we're doing VOD reviews frequently, Anything that we talk about, concepts that we want to improve on, the coaching, the teaching, the correction is fresh in their mind. It's not we did a three-hour VOD review four days ago. It's we did a 15, 20-minute VOD review an hour ago. That's fresh on their mind. They're going to remember that better and increase the quality of the scrim performance. So up frequency, increasing that frequency, whether it's a 30-minute review here and then 30-minute review afterwards or a 15-minute review here and then a one-on-one -on -one tomorrow and then a, like a 45-minute review the next day, whatever. Frequency is great. Update the information, constantly be giving them fresh information of what, or fresh feedback rather, of what they need to be doing better. It allows you to overall increase the amount of VOD reviews that you do because you're just doing more and then keep, keep the concepts fresh. Last aspect of maintaining good quality VOD review is time. Now, most of us have spent VOD reviews of hour, two hours, or maybe even three hours of time. And for most teams, that just simply isn't going to work for most individuals in those teams anyway. And it's important to understand that quantity doesn't necessarily equal quality. Now, obviously, if you're like, well, I don't want to do short VOD reviews because I won't have time to get in everything. Well, there you go. You just nailed it. It is impossible as a coach for a team or an individual to fit in everything that you want to get over and expect to maintain focus, not only during the VOD review, but also in the scrum block. For example, if I go over a map guide for every single map that we're going to play over the course of a scrim block, all right, we need a position here and have to play this, we do 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 this. We do this. 
the players aren't going to remember that in the scrim block. They might remember bits and pieces, but they're never going to remember the whole thing. And ultimately, I'll have wasted their time, and I'll have wasted my time. So ultimately, it's much better for me to go in and say, look, we're going to spend 30 minutes, and we're going to talk about nothing but about our communicational structure. Or we're going to spend 30 minutes, and we're going to nail Nepal. We're going to, we're going to know everything about Nepal. And then you go into scrim block, and either the communicational structure or how you play just Nepal is much better. Players remember stuff, they go into, hey, all right, we know exactly what to do. And they are executing perfectly. Now, the rest of the time, maybe in the other maps that aren't Nepal or the other aspects of the gameplay that aren't communicational structure, not so good. But that's okay because ultimately learning is a single step process. Uh, you, you focus on one thing, you see improvement, you move on to the next. You focus on one thing, you see improvement, you move on to the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. And you don't overwhelm the players with having to think about a multiple different things. You focus on one thing at a time, you let them execute on that one thing, and then when you see improvement, you move on to the next. A 30 minute VOD review where only improvement is seen at Nepal is better than a three hour VOD review where you see mediocre or little no improvement on all the maps. Now you can do more 30 minute VOD reviews. Maybe you do one scrim block, you talk about Nepal, and then you have a short rest, you come back, do a 15 minute review, you talk about Oasis, and then the next block you focus on Oasis. And what you'll see is some of the feedback that you gave them from Nepal from a block ago is actually remembered and applied in the next block because they build it. They're trying to build it into their muscle memory. They're trying to build it into their memory, right? And that's how learning happens, little bit by little bit. But ultimately, if you're spending three hours trying to cover everything or just really grind down on one topic, you're ultimately wasting their time. You're wasting your time. Now, obviously, three hours is an exaggeration. But listen, guys, even something as long as one hour, unless you're very engaging, unless there's a lot of discussion, unless it's really intense, unless it's very purposeful, very fresh, very interesting, you are going to struggle to keep players focused for one hour. Um, and I'm not saying the type of players that are you know, checking Twitter. Even if they're sitting there listening to you, a lot of it's going in one ear and out the other. It's just too much information to process without actually going in game and practicing it. So uh, I encourage you, take the 30 minute sessions, do as many of those as you want throughout the day, split them up, put them in between this block and that block, do one-on-ones, do team reviews, different concepts but ultimately you want your players really listening and then more importantly being able to take that information and apply it in game as efficiently as you possibly can you cannot fix every problem at once it's got to be one at a time be efficient as you possibly can and don't have players dreading VOD reviews either best way of doing that or best way of avoiding that rather is by keeping your VOD reviews frequent and succinct last thing I'm going to talk about is focus as a skill set and this is important to remember as coaches as well Ultimately, there's a reason why some players have a harder time focusing and others do not. And the reason that for that is, is ignoring things like diet, sleep patterns, and other things, is focus is a skill set. Focus is a skill set that part of the reason why our culture's attention span is dropping is because we're not training our focus enough. Ultimately, focus is something that you can practice. When you talk with your players, say, hey guys, we're going to practice being completely focused for this entire bot review. The entire VOD review, no giving up, no distractions, no nothing. I want you guys discussed, uh, discussing things. I want you guys involved all the way throughout. So what you can do to improve your player's focus, and you can't force them to practice this, but you can encourage them to practice building their focus length. Guys, focus really hard for this entire VOD review. You could do it. Focus, 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 focus. Okay? And if the player really applies themselves, and this is for you players out there watching this video too, they will slowly over time improve their focus skill set. There's a lot of other videos on that, so I won't go into that. You can do your own research on that, but it's needless to say, uh, focus is a skill set. It can be improved upon. It can be practiced to where maybe you, even you could be able to survive the one hour of out reviews without losing focus. Not recommended. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Ironically, as I said, it is a little bit long considering it was a video about keeping players focused, but ultimately this topic is something that is very important and there's a lot of detail to it. So it's something that as a coach, you're not going to be, uh, going to be immediately able to fix and apply. It's something that you should take different aspects of. All right, I'm going to focus on just doing short VOD reviews. All right, I'm going to be focusing on doing very succinct VOD reviews. All right, I'm going to be focusing on doing um, VOD reviews that are very uh, detailed or I'm going to work on my preparation for VOD reviews. Find one aspect of that focus through the discussion the preparation, the purposefulness, or the uh, motivation, and work on that one aspect until you improve upon that. Because just like the players, you really should be focusing and working on one thing at a time as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord, through Twitter, or my email. You guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video.